just witnessed Dr. Felton once again hack um, a Diebold TS machine. He also mentioned that unsuspecting poll workers can, in fact, insert software, malicious software, into machines. Um, you've had some experience with that. Tell me about that. Well, we've done a number of patches on the machines. One of the most notable patches was in Georgia in 2002 during the primary. We were provided a patch to put into the system that was supposed to fix the clock. But it came to me that there was no clock fix involved at all. The clock still would not keep time after I patched 56 machines. Who told you to install this patch? I was provided this patch by the president at that time of Diebold Election Systems, Bob Rosevich. Mm -hmm. And did, were you told to, ins if it was a clock patch, as you thought, were you told to install it in all the machines in the county or just some machines? Well, I had a set of machines that I was in charge of, and that was the instruction I was given, install it in those machines. Now, you mentioned that you you were hired as a contractor to oversee the setup of the elections to educate uh, the polling workers, correct? Uh, more so voter education, and my assignments as Election Day arrived, I, I was converted, so, so to say so to speak, into a technician. Okay. Now, you worked in Maryland and Georgia in 2002-2004, correct? That is correct. Okay. You're well aware, of course, of the uh, debacle with the recent primary in Maryland. Yes. But you mentioned that's nothing compared to some of the things that you've seen in prior elections. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, most notably, in the year 2004, in the primary and general elections, we had several disasters that took place in Baltimore County. Uh, when I say disasters, that means that cards were erased, this memory card that is so precious because it contains the votes. They were erased, and we had difficult times recovering them. Uh, I can say that in the 2004 presidential, there were nearly 200 cards erased in Baltimore County through a malfunction in the machine. And you witnessed this? Yes. What did the state and other technicians do about this? Well, for the most part, if an election doesn't make the newspapers, it's considered a good election. So there was a great effort made to keep this away from the press. Now, the problems with the machines, and you know about the hacking, um, are they, the, some of the fixes with the issues in 2004 with the touchscreen machines, Maryland says they, they claim that they fixed them. But do you see the similar pattern of, of problems happening with this primary, with the screen freezes, the lost votes, the addings of votes? Because you've witnessed that in prior elections, correct? Uh, after 2004 and some of the memorandums that came out concerning errors in the system, I have come to believe that these errors are now permanently embedded into the system, and the system needs to be replaced completely. You also mentioned that going into 2004, that Diebold officials, as well as the state, were expecting problems with the election, the primary and the general election, and that they gave workers and technicians uh, a, a list of what to do if there are errors on the screen. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, we received a memo a few weeks before the election, uh, things uh, that we were being warned to watch out for. One of those things was a possible system failure that would erase memory cards in the machines, in each touchscreen. And it was a very complex instruction. There were about 10 different errors that could occur. And lo and behold, those errors did occur on both the primary and the general election. What were you expected to do if errors came up on the machines? Well, there's a process by which if a memory card is erased, you can restore the votes from the chip memory inside the touchscreen. Uh, but there are also scenarios where you cannot restore the memory. It simply will not react to the restore instructions you may provide. So therefore, you're left with a blank card. People uh, hires people, uh, what, weeks before the election to help with the polls. These are not trained technicians, correct? Yes, they're basically hourly workers. They're hired off some of the internet employment sites, and they're given uh, one or two day jobs. And yes, they're, they're, they're not trained properly. Um, what happens on election day is really that the corporation takes over the election and handles all the field work. Uh, and in this case, it would be Diebold elections, hiring their own personnel to carry out Maryland's election. When you say that you were Diebold personnel, what, what did you do? Uh, well, we were personnel that was assigned to a certain number of precincts. So on election day, we were to go out and make sure those precincts opened and closed efficiently. So there were a number of tasks that we do. Uh, some of them are really jobs for state personnel to do, but we were given the authority to do them.